What's happening, everybody? It is your host, Darian Gray, the mouth of the South, and I'm back once again. This is episode two of season two of Out of Bounds. How y'all feeling today? I'm here with a couple of my friends who gonna name themselves from left to right. It's the leading lady, Tia J. Yes, sir. And it's your boy, Ill Will, a.k.a. Truly Humble. Welcome back, everybody. Yeah, yeah. It's your boy, Lil Blake, you know what I'm saying, here on the ones and twos. So, yeah, if y'all yes, remember... <laughs> This isn't the typical guy that we have right here, typically Saucy Dave, who could not make it today. He's a little under the weather, still a little sick from Sunday when the Saints beat the Cowboys. Ooh. He's been ducking me all week. That's <laughs> I, a, I, wow. I ain't seen him all. I, uh, I seen him today by mistake. He ran into me in, in the stairwell. He couldn't run out fast enough. So Dave decided he didn't want to be on the podcast today because he was a little fearful of what I might say. But unfortunately for him, I was still going to talk. So he's not here to defend himself. So it is what it is, he right? he would. Definitely, oh, yeah. definitely, 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 but I don't want to break tradition, so we're going to get to Saints and Cowboys, <laughs> y'all know that, we're going to get there, mm-hmm. but before that, let's get to the home front, which is the illustrious Texas Southern University, we're going to start off with football like usual, any of y'all want to, anyone want to pop this off? I do, I will, I'll start it off. All right, Tia. So, basically, I only really have one thing to say. Um, until we actually see improvement in the team and, like, in stats, I feel like we speak about the same thing each week. So I feel like until there's something we could talk about, TCU needs to step it up on the field. Exactly, because at this point, it's like a broken record. Like, yeah. we touch on this, like, every single week. The but, like, come swag. I have a little faith in my guys. A little bit of faith in my guys come swag because, mind you, some of the teams that, some of the teams that we played already – they won their division already, or won their conference rather, and it's a new team like we've been talking about every week. But like I said, I have a faith, I have a little faith from the swag play that they'll pick it up. Um, I mean, swag play's coming up, so hopefully we can get some wins. But we gotta just make sure we score early and often, and not be so far behind. Defense is really not good. <laughs> this this game here, this game here was quite disappointing. Me and Wilson were there. And, man, it just felt like every time that Texas Southern was looking like they got some type of momentum, it was snatched away just as quickly as it came. The first play of the game, long 64-yard bomb to, the, to uh, excuse me, to Trindavian Dixon. Two plays later, fumble on the lateral. Mm. Team come back in the end of the first half. Second half in 10 minutes, it go from 37-21 to 65-21. After you live tweeted it too, because we started live tweeting to keep up with the game, because we were like, "Oh, the team's coming back. Let's get up the fans involved." People that weren't looking at it, and as soon as my boy tweeted it, it was a completely different game. Like, oh yeah. my god, I'm, I'm a jinx. I'm a jinx. I believe in the jinxes too. Very superstitious. So I, I don't think that the next game you won't be catching nothing on my live tweeting. But if you want to just catch my tweets, you can catch me at South Exclusive. You know what I'm saying, <laughs> Mr. Point Blank. Period. You know what it is. Uh, <laughs> as long as you don't be live tweeting doing homecoming, we good. I'm definitely we not good. live coming. <laughs> but, but in all, in all, on the bright side, let's try to get a little bit of you know the defense was it was piss poor. Unfortunately, the secondary kept moving in and out, but offensively, we came alive. I think, you know, um, mm-hmm. Trendavian Dixon, the guy who caught a deep pass, he had he actually had a touchdown later in the game. But the person I want to get to, who and I want to know what you guys think about this. I think that our best receiver is not Trendavian Dixon. I know that he's leading the league, I mean, lead, leading our team in yardage. I actually think the best receiver is Donnie Corley. I think he's the best receiver. Got SWAC Newcomer of the Week this week. And I just want to know what you guys think because that's my, if I had to pick, I think he's the best receiver on the team. I mean, Corley, Corley's nice. Don't get me wrong, but his hands are inconsistent. That's the main thing about him. And, like, the first game we saw against Prairie View, he was dropping a lot of passes. He did step up his play every single game that came along. But Dixon, like, he has speed. Like, he knows how to run routes. He's an elite route runner. And he's, like, I feel like he's better than Corley in some type of way. Don't you think? It's it like, it hmm. could go either way. I think that I wouldn't just attest drop just to Corley. I think, honestly, Morbley, Thurman Morbley, was mm-hmm. probably the worst of the drop artists. Yeah. But I think that when in short yardage situations, I think that Corley has the most elusiveness. I think that Corley might be – they're close in speed. We'll just call that even. Yeah. But I think that I, – I got Corley. But I don't think Dixon is a bad pick at all. I think Dixon is – he's shown what he could do last year. He's shown what he's do this, what he could do this year. Mm-hmm. But Corley, he's missed the game. Um, he missed the, the second game against Incarnate Word. Mm-hmm. 
but he's been the leading receiver in three of the four games he, in th- in the three games he played, except for that one. But I think Tia J summed it up the best. <laughs> until we get something new. Yeah, until we get something it's new. It's like, what are we even until talking we get a about? Dub or something. So, I mean, <laughs> let's move on because we, we, it's the same thing. Yeah. Defense yeah. has to step it up. Offense looks all right. Area yeah. attack. Tyler Cook was oh, good. Yeah. yeah. I need Coach McKinney to play him some more. But, like I said, same thing. So, let's let's talk about winning. Y'all want to talk about winning? Oh, yeah. Like, y'all want to talk about some teams that won something? Winning is definitely always a fun topic. This week. This with all due won. respect, with all due respect, I'm going to defer to Tia J. She was there at the <laughs> SWAC Roundup this week. I was. Give I me was. a little update. So, just a little bit about the SWAC Roundup. Uh, it was at Prairie View, Texas, and we played uh, five teams. We ended the tournament 3-2. and two. We beat Alcorn, Alabama State, and Mississippi Valley. We lost to Jackson State and AAU. Um, we had a really good competition. The whole SWAC, when I was looking, um, just not watching TSU, watching all the teams was really good competition. Uh, TSU definitely kept the tempo up and, um, you know, kept up with all the teams. Alexis Austin is senior this year. She's leading the team right now with uh, 106 kills. Uh, Arita Gels has 74 kills, and Danielle Lilly has 87 kills. So offensively, we are attacking really good, and defensively, we're doing really good, too. Uh, Grayson, she's doing uh, really good on defense. She uh, she gets named uh, defensive player. You know, she gets recognized in almost each game that she plays. Uh, Bree York is a setter. She's also a senior this year. She's um, already has 313 assists for this season. So uh, going into SWAC, I think that there's good competition, but TSU definitely um, is up there with them as well. So they play Southern this week. Uh, they didn't play them in the tournament, SWAC tournament, but uh, that's going to be a good game because they both have really good tempos uh, playing. So we'll see how that goes this weekend. Definitely excited to see everything that comes out of our girls because they went 3-2. and two, So as of right now, they have a winning SWAC record. Mm-hmm. And the person that you pointed out, you know, I know that York, uh, Tira Gels, they were all playing well. Mm-hmm. But Valencia Grayson, I feel like, is a person who we've consistently mentioned on a mm-hmm. on a weekly basis. You know, when we were doing our re- our runs before it actually went out, we were talking about Grayson. Mm-hmm. And then I think we did two of them was Grayson, Grayson. Mm-hmm. I think last week we mentioned Grayson. And this exactly. week, defensive player of the, uh, of the week for, for the SWAC. Grayson. And exactly. <laughs> so she had 19 digs in the first mm-hmm. game against Alabama State. Mm-hmm. That was her career best. And in total, she had 87 digs and 20 assists. So I'm in, I'm excited to see. I wish I could have went with you. You know, you took right. our intern Jacoby. I Jacobi did take went. Jacoby with me. Shout out to Jacoby. Shout he was Kobe, there, man. helped me out a little bit, and was really excited to be there. So. Yeah, and and the girls right now, like I'm really really proud of the way they stepped up because those couple games before, like I saw a lot of potential on them in those women. But the thing is, we face a lot of non-conference opponents that were pretty pretty tough. But now we're showing the fruits of our training now in the SWAC, in SWAC play now, and we're really, really stepping up. So I'm really glad the way they played. Mm-hmm. So it looks like the only thing that needs to be cut out for SWAC, for the rest of SWAC, is errors. You can't, beat, you can't beat a team if you're beating yourself. Exactly. It's impossible. Mm-hmm. It's not going to happen. So if the team is going to improve, that's one thing they have to take care of. And like you said, they got Southern coming up, so that's mm-hmm. gonna it's done. We're we're done with all the out of conference. We're yeah. down in in, in it, the we're depth. in conference. We're now. here, yeah. You know, and mm-hmm. it's time to show up. And the only way that they can continue the momentum that they have right now is by cutting out the own errors. Exactly. But moving into soccer, and some more winning. You know, I ain't gonna lie to y'all. It made me <laughs> excited to talk about this. I get excited because it's like, man, I'm a football guy. But football ain't been going too good for us. <laughs> so, go you know, for <laughs> volleyball, you know, I'm excited for when volleyball come down because, like I said, they're winning. Right. Soccer, I was able to go to their first game, and it was really impressive. Versus like, Alcorn, correct? Yeah, versus Alcorn. I was able yeah. to go to that one. Yeah, you were like there. blew them out the I water, there, didn't yeah. they? But that's nothing new. I don't, they ain't beat us since 2003. Mm. I wasn't even sweat. <laughs> I knew what it was going to be. Yeah. <laughs> I look at it, I said, oh, okay, Alcorn. Like, it's just certain Dang. games on the schedule. You look at you and be like, yeah, all right, that's, we that's can do that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? We call that trap games. You know, well, well, we call those trap games where they might catch you. They ain't get caught slipping. All right, Coach Barry, this is our first season uh, as the head coach. 
and she's showing right now, 2-0 and in swag play, mm-hmm. that she's deserving of this position. You know, like you said, it's the story of every single team mm-hmm. in, the, in the TSU program. You have a tough out-of-conference schedule. It looks a little bad, and then you get the swag playing. Like, all right, these, these guys or these girls might be legit, and I think that the soccer team is legit. That mm-hmm. offensive presence is great. I was sitting in there with one of the redshirt freshmen, Gia Hodge. She was in the press box, and she was yelling the energy that was just – it was infectious. It made me want to be excited. It made me want to keep going to games. Yeah, definitely. And even on the field, when you're talking about excitement and just talking, they talk on the field. So you hear them communicating on the field as well uh, as Coach Vera. Her first, this is her first season. I think she's doing great. From the sideline, she was um, talking to the players. You know, you know how coaches, you know, be yelling and stuff. She was just sitting there talking to them, teaching them. So definitely, the the momentum of the soccer team is looking really good. I think like starting off the season. The team was a little discouraged, you know, allowing all the high points like seven zero, five zero, nine zero. <clears throat> now we're in swag play. It's like okay, five zero, two zero. Like we're starting to flip the turn. We're, start, we're trying to turn it, turn the wheels a little bit and get them going. Like now, okay, swag plays here. We have to make sure we beat Howard next. Like Howard's our next game, and I'm pretty sure we'll beat them like three zero. Like it's pretty much evident that we're pretty prepared for swag play. Oh yeah, I have a lot of faith <coughs> in my girls right now, and the piggyback. Piggyback off of what uh, Tia said and Darian said, we always have like tough non-conference games, and then once we get into slack, we start to pick up, uh, pick up the pace. And Coach Barry, she is doing a heck of a job out there. And like Tia said, the energy is on a high note. Everybody's in tune. Everybody's in cahoots. And I feel like we're gonna have a really great swag playing out. Definitely, I'm excited to see what we. I'm, I gotta stop saying excited. I gotta. I'm, I'm enthusiastic. Yeah, <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. Enthusiastic. I, re- I, I, mean, I be looking at Miriam Webster from time to time. But you know, <laughs> I'm, I'm I'm ready to see what's going to happen because the one thing that we said they have to attack. It's like it's almost as if they were listening to everything that we said because we said how they need to be able to attack offensively and defend defensively. And I'll tell you right now, they were playing on the football field, and on their goal side or the, where their goalie is, yeah. the ball didn't cross the forty much. All right, At the all. goal was not within – the ball was not within 40 yards of our goal often. Mm-hmm. And it was frequently played over there. Mm-hmm. And I just thought that was really impressive, you know. So, after this quick – before I uh, cut out, anybody got any other thoughts on the soccer team? Nobody? Mm-hmm. All right, so after a quick break, we'll be right back with some professional sports. We are back, and we're going to get into professional sports. Like I told y'all, once again, for y'all who are just now tuning in, Sir David the Sauce Man, a.k.a. Saucy <laughs> Dave, a.k.a. David Butler, is not here with us right now. He is out sick. He still is ill, unlike my friend Will, about this Cowboys <laughs> game. So, uh, so. Sauce on talking. We're going to talk about it. Oh, let's do it. We're going to talk about let's it. do it. <laughs> now, I spent all Monday talking my talk. I walked all up and down the Tiger Walk. I had my Saint shirt. I had my throwback Saint shirt on. Oh. Ain't nobody want to say nothing to me. <laughs> I want my I want my Saint jersey after we beat the Texans. Week one, two, three weeks prior. Everybody had a whole lot of stuff to say to me. Everybody had a whole lot of stuff to say about how the Cowboys won't beat the Saints. Everybody had a whole lot of stuff to say about how Drew Brees ain't do this, that, and the third. Everybody had a whole lot of stuff to say about how we was not going to be able to handle them. Well, I'm going to tell you like this. Mm. I'm going to tell you like this. Tell them. 12-10. Not an impressive score, Mm-mm. but it's dominating on the defense. Ezekiel Elliott held to his worst yards per carry since Denver. Mm-hmm. That Prescott looking like Dakota Prescott that we knew from last year. Mm-hmm. Not like the guy who faced the Dolphins. Not the $40 million man. Not at all. On. $40 million. We, no. we, we, we didn't no. think that. This is, the, you know, I thought that everybody was going to say, well, you know, the, you look at the Cowboys who they face. They face they faced Josh Rosen, who will be a backup next year. Mm-hmm. They faced Case Keenum who, if any markings of last week, is now a backup. And who, who, who the other team they beat? Man, they, they play. Oh, they, they play played Eli, the Giants. They play Eli, Eli Manning. Like, who is now a backup. Whew. Well, I guess you can only play so many backups because you ran into Teddy Two Gloves, another backup for the New Orleans Saints. Mm. And I'm just going to put it like this. The man, the man wasn't great. He pissed me off. He pissed me <laughs> off with that little sack. He made me upset. I ain't going to lie. You know, if I didn't love my room so much and love my TV, I would have threw something at it. But he had me hot. I mean, Teddy was pretty straight out there. I mean, he can't be Ooh. on him like two. T- I mean, nah, honestly, that, 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 that sack made me mad. That, that is sack, true. That sack made me want to 
Boy, I ought to. Man, I was upset. <laughs> I was Man, through I with him. Too. And just to add I what you through. said, and to add what you said on the down on the defensive end, let's put this in perspective. Cowboy fans, we kept hearing all three weeks about how, oh, we're three and oh, oh, we're going to the Super Bowl. Dak, $40 million. Let's see what your $40 million man did and the whole Cowboys team did. Let's, let's talk about it, boy. That night, they had only thir- 213 yards. That's it? Only, yeah. <laughs> Maybe a little more, That's probably it. like 240, but it's not the same. It's Pedestrian. Not the same Pedestrian. And for passing yards, that boy Dakota Prescott, 168. He finished with 223 with one interception. Mm. That's your $40 million man? How, how let, me, let me be how, light what? because let me be light because Dave's not here to defend himself. You know, no, so I don't no. want to beat a man while he's already down. Be light, cause I'm a, I'm a, I'm a hip some, put some more on there. That's mm-hmm. on, on everything. Come and that on man now. Z and that man Z. What he do? Sold. He got paid all that money. Ninety million. Mm. Just Must have been running with ninety million on him. He couldn't run that good. <laughs> Longest run was seven yards. But you know, who's counting? I'm sorry. Am I monopolizing, guys? I'm sorry. Tia, go ahead. I I've been talking my stuff forever. De- uh, <laughs> My bad. I almost, I almost wanted to refer to Dave. Yeah, like, <laughs> like I, I just like, one point nine yards per carry. That's. I mean, he scored a touchdown, but like, <laughs> 18, a touchdown. 18 carries, thirty five yards, ninety million dollars. Do you know how many people he ticked off on fantasy for? Like, if you have him on your fantasy, go ahead and remove him. Uh, get Derrick Henry or something like that. Don't get Derrick Henry. I got him starting, but he's doing pretty good. He's doing pretty good on my team. But it's crazy Zeke. that Derrick Henry is man. playing. <laughs> Derrick Henry. Anyway. He's not doing that bad on my fantasy. Derrick Henry. All right. We We're talking about Derrick Henry here. <laughs> <laughs> We're talking about – anyway, let's not even get off of but last off, off subject. We couldn't tell the difference between Zeke and Derrick Henry, but go on, go on. My bad. Man, <laughs> I think that – what more is there to say? All right, Amari Cooper had a 142.8 passer rating when aimed to him the first three weeks. That was the lowest he had. He was in the 70s this time. Marshawn Lattimore, thank you. I want to say thank you. I appreciate you so much for returning to your form. I was getting a little bit worried. PFF has you ranked as the 66th best corner in the whole NFL. Oh, my God. And 66? for those, yes, who are those? I'm familiar. There are 32 Damn. players, 32 teams. Let me do a little math for you guys. 32 times 2, which is how many cornerbacks are on the field starting. That's 64. They're saying that Marshawn Lattimore isn't even qualified to be a starting corner in the NFL. Oh 66. <clears throat> did he make a Pro Bowl his first year? He did. He was also defensive rookie, rookie, rookie of the year. year. Exactly. And they got him running 66. God, dog. But I, I will give this to the, to the Cowboys. I will give this to them. The Cowboys' defense is also as legit. I know Drew wasn't there. But them boys, Van Der Esch, and Jalen Smith in the middle is where it's at. Yeah. All right? Those guys can fly sideline to sideline with the defensive line in front of them that can hold up offensive linemen. And that's the key. They can fly because ain't nobody getting to them. Not that the defensive line is just phenomenal, though. Robert Quinn had a great game on the edge. It's the fact that they can hold up blockers. And Van Der Esch and Smith can run to the football and can attack. And that's I think that I think that these two teams are two teams that don't really want to face each other because stylistically – they affect each other in the same way. Exactly. I don't think Zeke will have a good game against the Saints often. I don't think Kamara will have a good game against the Cowboys often. We saw what Mike did, Michael Thomas. He had a, he had nine catches for 95 yards. He was all right. He, he, he was more than all right. He was good. Yeah. But all in all, these teams are pretty equal. Exactly. And one more thing, Cowboys fans. All I know is next week y'all need some prayer because do you know who y'all face next week? Y'all facing Tia's team. The and Packers. I know they are ticked the heck off from losing to us. So all I got to say is good night and good uh, luck. Yeah, listen. Yeah. You know, I did want to bring up That's the Packers talk. and the Eagles because, you know, I don't really care about the Cowboys. But uh, Green Bay did have did lose to the Eagles. I'll go ahead and just admit that. But they started off strong, though. Green Bay started off strong with seven. And in the first quarter, seven zero to the Eagles. But, you know. I mean, your head, it's kind of your head coach's fault, too, because the man should have the man should have ran the ball when he was in the end zone. I agree. Like, why did he pass literally three? They couldn't times? run. If we're just being honest, somebody has to talk about the fact that the Green Bay Packers aren't good in the second half offensively. They, ju- they just haven't been. That's true. They haven't, been, they haven't been good against any teams. They're, they're one touchdown against Chicago first half. The Against the Vikings, I don't think they scored a touchdown in the – I don't think they scored again in the second half. And yeah. then they, they just haven't played well. I think that something needs to be discussed. They only scored seven against y'all in the second half. I mean, but let's be honest, though. If you have your best receiver out, Devontae Adams. He didn't go out too late. 
Kenny got to like. He still had that. He still had that one drive. I think he run the ball. I think he was. I think he was out. What the last drive? It was just no, the last it was drive. more than the last drive because they had two drives in the red zone that they could have scored on us, but they elected to throw. And mm-hmm. it was Devontae was out like what the third? It had quarter? just second it maybe. Third, yeah. It had to be the third quarter. Mm-hmm. But they, they they they're telling me in my ear that we need to go ahead and hurry up, move on to the to the next topic, which is the California Pay to Play Act, where oh, collegiate man. athletes are going to be paid in the state of California. Hey, man. Thoughts on hey. that? Who wants to start for us? I like it. I like it. I think we broke. We broke college kids. Come on now. Like, stipend's okay, I guess. But, like, pay me some money. I'm out here risking my life. Like, I'm getting hit. Helmet to helmet is serious. Like, no, like, that's not that's not it at all. I feel like they're, they're getting paid for basically doing their job. And I like it. It's cool. It's cool. It's yeah. far away, though, but it's cool. Yeah, it's a really a start towards something great. And now, like I've been saying for like a long, long time, the one thing athletes need is to make money off their likeness. But there's no reason schools should be getting like a million over, uh, over ten million dollars in funding, and they only get like none of it. You always walk into the student center and see your jersey hanging on the rack, hanging on the rack, but you get none of it. So how how fair is that to the athletes to be dealing with that for so much time? And now finally, we finally get the, we finally have a step for them to finally get what they deserve. Yeah, disagreeing with everybody, I think it's about time. I mean, this argument has been in conversation for years now. So, you know, for California to actually put that, you know, start it, you know, we'll see where it goes from here. So I'm actually happy, you know, for the athletes to get that, you know, get money back and actually have them promote themselves even more now. Yeah, I think this is going to be the most important change in the NCAA this century. Since, and if not this century, the only thing that can compare to it is the introduction of the college football playoffs and having a big deal. This is so important. Now, I'm I'm 21 years old. I remember going up playing NCAA football, you know, and you know how upset it was, like, I go in there and I play with LSU and I have to look at CB7. Yeah, like, no, I want to see Patrick Peterson. Like, exactly. <laughs> I want to see I want to see Tyron Matthew. I want to see their names. Now they can get paid. Can we bring the game back, please? I hope so. Mm-hmm. It's a good chance. Though. That game really was fire. Chance. Like, I hope so. I mean, the state EA is in. I mean, they have and, no choice but to. And I'll put it like this. This is going to benefit the state of California. Actually, let me say that. I thought it was going to. When I first thought about this, I said, all right, California's going to be the best the best state now. You're going to have you're gonna have Stanford, UCLA, USC, University of Cal. They're all going to be able to go so far. But this doesn't go into action until 2023. And since this has been passed, now Florida is trying – is proposing a bill that will go into action in 2020. I and I think this that. is so great because now you have so many people who can get paid. You're a great athlete. You're doing everything. And in, in football, you have to be there three years. In basketball, you can be there a year. You can argue after a year you can get your money or whatever. But football, you have to be there for three whole years. So now I tell myself, all right, if I'm going to be there for three years and I know I've been great, look at somebody who came in, Trevor Lawrence. He would get he, he would get a an, an endorsement, but he can't get it right now. So I think that if Florida passes this bill, you're going to see the other 48 states soon follow up. And then you'll be able to to see who will be able to get the most money and Mm -hmm. all these things, who can get the most endorsements, who can do this, that, and the third. And now you will finally be able to see them be properly compensated because, no, scholarships is not the proper compensation. Mm -hmm. At all. You can now see the proper compensation for making your school (coughs) millions upon millions of dollars. And everybody's saying, like, that's really a bad thing for college sports. Like, it's all about the team and stuff. No, it, it is, but then again, it's not. you got to understand, a lot of these kids, they, came, they come from broken homes, single-parent households, and the sports that they play is the only thing they know. It's the only thing that puts bread on the table. And the fact that a lot of people with these scholarships, they think that it covers everything, it's a lot of things that come out of a scholarship. you got to pay for housing. Books like all that, even though it does cover it, it only leaves them with like probably a hundred dollars. And how long does that last until the next payment period? About like what two months, three months? You stretch it. If you can, if you can hold a hundred dollars for three months, I mean, you, I ain't holding I'm not applauding you on that. Stretch. Teach me your ways if you could stretch a hundred <coughs> mil in three months. Man, That's what? a week, <laughs> <laughs> a week. <laughs> but before we close out, any more conversation that you guys feel needs to be had on the California pay to play act. I mean, 
although like this is a positive act that's going through, there's always some cons to it. So what do you guys think would be a, some cons to this? Recruiting. I, maybe. I've been hearing a lot of people say as well, like, you know, how about the people that go to Duke? Like, they got Nike endorsements. Or how about the one that goes to, like, Adidas school? They got automatic Adidas endorsement. Mm-hmm. But people got to realize there's so many influencers that walk around college campuses every day looking for people to endorse them. Right. Like, shoot, Yoba. Right. P- basketball players here or, like, whatever, football players here, they can holler up at Yoba to get an endorsement from Right. Them. Just have them cut. sponsor them. Yeah. Just put their names on the jersey. Exactly. It's just the little things that really kind of. with all the little things. Oh yeah, quick plug, quick plug. Let's say, hey, number seventeen. <laughs> I'm gonna just throw this out there, you know, TSU. Y'all should try to get a Puma endorsement. Um, Puma. you know, Puma. if you know, if Texas, if Texas can get this bill definitely not passed, you know, so that's this Puma. Their shoes kind of straight though. Their shoes kind of straight, but it's I mean, like the jersey. What the jersey gonna look like? Hey. Yeah, I mean, who knows? I think this. Is, I think that paying everybody is going to kill any more hope that we once had that HBCUs can rise up in dominance again. I don't see it ever happening now because it's already an un- unfair advantage of far, as far as the talent level and the stigma of being found and whatnot. But if you can pay, you're, you're getting way more money at the University of Texas than Texas Southern. I mean, it still could be a rise in HBCUs. Like Chris Poussard says, it's time for black athletes to mostly come to HBCUs because now you can help fund the school to, like, what, put new areas around the campus to, like, or help go towards education, like they actually have a, a reason to go here because they're helping their own people. But it's instead of them going to a PWI, it, it that that's okay. But at the capitalistic society that we live in, where the dollar is the most important voice that there ever has been, I'm, you're gonna go to a school that can pay you more. There's no, Texas Southern is not gonna be able to pay what these big schools can. Like now, you have to hope that people do what's quote unquote morally right, as they say. You but know, like I said earlier, there's a lot of influencers, like not just Texas Southern and Houston, period. You know, this small market, then, this small market, like clothing lines or small market, like shoe lines or something like that. small them. market, but that, that ain't but Nike you can have money. Mul- you can have multiple of them, though. That's the thing. You Even though it's not Nike money, you can still, yeah. like, add on. You know, you can have unlimited endorsements at what, this point. What? Okay, so tell me why they couldn't do that at a place where you can get multiple big money endorsements. I mean, well, don't they still do it, too? Like, if somebody goes to Duke, like, well, Nike, it covers up, like, a, a bunch of endorsements already in itself. But, like, even small athletes, too, like, it's still chances for them to make money. I mean, like obviously, but I'm saying the opportunities are not bigger in a smaller market than as far as you take the top five schools and pick a conference. Or you take the, the top the top five schools, the top one in every Power Five conference versus the top five in the SWAC or the MIAC, whichever ones you want to pick. That it's just the opportunities won't they won't equal, like there's right. no there's no in, there's no more incentive to go to a HBCU than there is to go to a PWI. But we other don't than know. Feeling like but we don't know right what thing. the faces of HBCUs are going to be in a couple years though. Let's say by 2023, the rates of people transferring to HBCUs raised. Like our basketball team, we just got a guy from Mississippi State. We got a couple guys from another D1. Like the rates that people are transferring to HBCUs is growing. So it, who's to say people won't come to HBCUs in the future? Who's to say, like, the, the tie won't change in that, you know? Well, I mean, if we're doing hypotheticals, then yes. But as far as how it is right now, I just – there the, the reason that you're going to – typically, if we're going to be completely honest and no disrespect to people who go there, yeah. most most people who transfer – as because you're referring to athletes? Yes. Most, uh, most of these guys who transfer from bigger schools to schools such as Texas Southern and Alabama and m Southern, it's not – just because they felt like it was the right thing to do. It's because they weren't getting the play time that they wanted at these other universities. That's typically why they go. They don't just come here because, oh, you know what, let me let me support my, my ethnicity. Let me go to an HBCU. Like, I mean, you, you never know. It might, be com- it might be comfortable for some athletes, though. It know? could be. It could be, but we're, we're going with what is right now. I mean, yes, that could happen. Like, they could decide, hey, that's what we want to do. And – I just, I mean, we could we could just agree to disagree, but I don't yeah, think. But that. I agree on the part is like everything's a big if. Like yeah. who's to say it might be three years? It might be what ten years? You never yeah. know. So it's like I get what you're saying about the if part. So I agree. Yeah, definitely. But after one more break, we'll be back with our rapid fire questions. See you in a second. All right, so now we're back with our last little wrap up, and for y'all who do not know. 
rapid fire questions are where we all get a topic. We pick them during the break, and we get a minute to speak our mind on whatever our thing says. We don't know what it is right now, but we pick them and they they close. And we're gonna start off with the leading lady, and we're gonna go with Tia J. All right, Tia, are you ready? Yes. Okay, I'm gonna put a minute on the clock, and you can go in three, two, one. Okay, so my question is, uh, who's a more annoying fan base, Cowboys or Saints? Dave. Dave, Cowboys. <laughs> <laughs> this was to all the Cowboys fans. Dave, I know you're the biggest one, but they are so annoying. Like, I like, I honestly like the Saints. And kind of like um, Stephen A. Smith, I remember he was, I don't remember where he was at, but he was wearing a Saints jersey, and the Cowboys fans were all on the back just, like, yelling and screaming for the Cowboys. And I just think any Cowboy fan is just annoying. I'll at you, boy. <laughs> so. <laughs> that was so funny. Oh, the Stephen A. Smith film? Yeah. yeah that was funny. <laughs> all right. Now we're going to go on to Ill Will. All righty, all righty. So my rapid fire question I got. What are your thoughts about Vontez Burfick hit on Jack Doyle? I believe that Burfick got what he deserved. I mean, this man literally, like, the, sus- the suspension for 12 games, he got what exactly he deserves. The man lost $5 million off of suspensions alone in his whole NFL career. He makes $30 million, $33 million total. And it's just no excuse where people have to tell you time and time again to slow the heck down. But I was reading this article the other day that came out on USA Today. Like, burper has been like that since he was a little kid. He's always been a headhunter. And he's the same man that I feel like he gave Antonio Brown a CTE. That one hit that he had in 2016. It's like, it's like man, when is it ever going to stop, fam? Like, when is he ever going to learn from it? So I feel like he got what he deserved on that part. All right. Blake. The newcomer. The newcomer. All right. All right, yes, sir. minute on the clock. Let's get it. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Thoughts on Damian Lillard this song to Shaq. <laughs> First of all, the song is fire. Go look at it on SoundCloud. This man, Dame Dollar, said, kind of like the Cavs ain't really need Diesel. Even in Miami, they won the finals off the strength of Flash. Like, that's crazy to me. He said that. Like, that's disrespectful. Like, I don't even, I don't really know the backstory to this beef. Like, I don't understand. But, like, Damian Lillard just did something that nobody else has ever done to Shaq. Like, what? So, I'm ready to see what Shaq has to say about him. Like, I'm ready to see. Definitely, definitely, definitely. So, last and least, it is I. Let's see what I got. All right, put a minute on the clock for myself. Is Minshew Mania real? It's a tricky question. Because since coming in, they are just two and two. So, I'm, but I'm going to go on a limb. I'm going to say yes. Minshew Mania is the real deal. Not because of his mustache. Not because, you know, he just looks like somebody we didn't expect to come out and play. But because the Jaguars were a quarterback away for a while. And it looks like they have a quarterback for the future. Unfortunately, they sacrificed that quarter, quarterback to get rid of their star corner. And Jalen Ramsey, who will be gone by the end of the year. And if not by the end of the year, he won't be a Jaguar next year. So you better try to make the most of it as they, while they can. But, yes, I think Minshew Mania is the real deal. I was never a big fan of Foles Magic. I feel like it was something blown out of proportion because of the Super Bowl run. But I think Minshew Mania is the real deal. And I think, I think the, the Jags might have just found their franchise leader for the next years to come. What's wrong, Wilson? Hmm? What's wrong? Oh, nothing. It's nothing wrong. I just got a little tickled when you said, like, okay, so quick question, quick question before we close. Do you think if Nick Foles was healthy, do you think he would be doing the same thing, if not better than Minshew? Honestly? The, like the same stylist, like same way? Like play, like like how they play. like. No. I don't think I don't think that Nick Foles has the mobility that Minshew has. Well, not mobility, like the I type think of stats cer- that he will put I up. I think like there's how- certain plays that Minshew makes that Nick Foles just couldn't make. I think that Nick Foles has a good arm, but Minshew has played really well. I, why are you so upset, bro? I'm not upset. Carson Wentz is your quarterback now. <laughs> I'm really not upset. I'm not. You just crunched your face up <laughs> while I was talking. I was watching. I have you. a natural scowl on my face. People think I'm a really mean person. No, I saw I'm it. Really, I saw, really I nice, saw it contract. I saw it. I think he misses Foles. Yeah. I don't miss Foles at all. I mean, I'm glad he got that money. I'm not glad that he's hurt, but we got a quarterback now. Mr. Magic Man himself, Nick Foles. So I think. I mean, 
Carson Wentz. Yeah. So we good. We good. He's he, hurting. He missed. Foles. He just called his new girl his old girl. He missed. Foles. It's all right. <laughs> That's crazy. It's all right. <laughs> it's all right, Wilson. It's okay, man. It's all right. Well, Brandon, go ahead and cut the camera off. We're gonna end it off. Wilson has to go to the bathroom and dry his, dry his eyes real quick. That's crazy. So I want to thank That's you guys crazy. for tuning in to another episode of Out of Bounds. I have been the mouth of the South, powered by the TSU Herald. Catch you next time.